So we have this basic form for an exponential equation. x is our independent variable and y is our dependent variable. Then a is the value of y when x is 0. And b is the multiplier. It's what y is multiplied by each time x goes up by 1. In various applications, we might be looking for any one of these numbers. And because this exponential expression behaves differently from anything linear, we need to use different techniques. If the numbers that we know are the values of b and of x, we're, we know exactly what to do. The equation that we have left is just linear. So for example, we might say, we might know that the number of bacteria in a petri dish is multiplied by 1.3 every hour. If the population starts at 35, what's the population after 24 hours? Here our variables are p, the population. That's our dependent variable. It acts like y. And t, the time. That's our independent variable. It acts like x. What are we told? We're told that the starting population is 35. The multiplier is 1.3 and we're asked to find what is the population after 24 hours. Plugging into our basic form, p is 35 times 1.3 to the 24th power. We don't want to work that out by hand, but on the calculator, 35 times 1.3 to the 24th power. Uh, round to the nearest whole number. 18998. 18,998 bacteria. We might also have a story where we need to figure out the starting value. Suppose the amount of a certain drug in the patient's bloodstream decreases exponentially so that every hour 87% of the drug remains. A pharmacist is planning a dose so that after 12 hours, 15 milligrams of the drug will remain. What should the initial dose be? Our variables here are D, the amount of the drug. That's our dependent variable. That's the thing that's being multiplied by something. So it's going to act like y in our form. And then t is the time in hours. That's our independent variable. That acts like x. Also notice something a little bit odd about the way that the multiplier is given. As always, here our multiplier is given as a percent. That was part of our clue that the drug was going to be our dependent variable because it says percent of the drug. It's the dependent variable that's multiplied repeatedly. We'll want to make 87% into a decimal before we calculate. So what are our variables here? The amount of the drug the starting amount, the amount of time, the multiplier, and the amount of time. In this story, we're certainly told the multiplier, that's 87%, which is 0.87. And we're definitely told the amount of time, that's 12 hours. But here, we're told not the starting amount, not the amount of the drug that's given at the beginning of the 12 hours. We want the amount, we're given, we're given the amount that's left at the end of the 12 hours. This 15 is 
the value of d that goes with t equals 12. What we're being asked to find is the starting amount. Okay, let's see how that works out. So this 15 that we end up with equals our starting amount that we don't know times the multiplier to the twelfth power. Now, when I go to the calculator, I can put this in. I type in 0.87 to the twelfth power. Ugh, that's an unpleasant number. It's just a number, though. So instead of actually working that out, I'm just going to work the algebra, leaving it written this way. So I'm going to divide both sides by that number. And then I'm just going to put that into the calculator. 15 divided by 0.87 to the 12th. And I get that A is about 80. To make sure that worked, 80 times 0.87 to the 12th. That really is very close to that really is very close to 15. So our answer is that the initial dose should be 80 milligrams. Okay, so when we want to find the final amount, it's really just a matter of plugging in and doing the arithmetic. When we want to find the starting amount, we need a little bit of algebra, but it's just dividing both sides by a number. The number's an unpleasant decimal, so we're leaving it written as a power of 0.87 for the moment, but it's just a number that we're dividing both sides by. 